lastly, I'd like to invite to the podium Stephen Schreibman, who is a trade expert and lawyer with Sack Goldman Mitchell Barristers and Solicitors, and uh, has created a new legal analysis on CETA and tar sands, which has been commissioned by the Indigenous Environmental Network and the Council of Canadians. Mr. Schreibman. Thank you. Well, I'll be very brief. My analysis is about 20 pages long, but it makes uh, two very simple points. The first is uh, the federal government sees relations with Europe, establishing a free trade agreement, as a way to frustrate uh, regulatory initiatives in both Europe uh, and by future governments in Canada, because it's clear that present governments have no interest in dealing with the environmental impacts associated with oil sands development, including the extravagant demands that have been placed on uh, diminishing water resources uh, in Alberta. And so for that purpose, it has rejected uh, requests by the European Union that the uh, rules of trade uh, be uh, subservient to, uh, not Trump, uh, measures that are required to uh, live up to the obligations that both nations have made, both the European community and Canada has made, uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We know that Canada has repudiated its obligations under the Kyoto Protocol, and now it sees uh, this trade instrument as Europe as a way to frustrate uh, European efforts to live up to its obligations and has actually threatened to invoke trade rules to challenge the Clean Fuel Directive in Europe. Uh, returning to Canada, uh, the federal government sees the investment rules uh, that it's proposing to be embedded in this agreement as a way to ensure uh, oil companies of continued access to Canadian water resources uh, and even to insert increasing demands on those resources uh, and efforts by Canadian governments to interfere with those demands and claims. Uh, will be met by claims for very substantial damages under these agreements, precisely of the kind that was recently made by a large forest management company seeking compensation when the government of Newfoundland uh, tried to recover its water taking permit and the federal government settled that claim for $130 million. So it's in trying to embed in these agreements something that never accomplished in the Canadian uh, political context, which is to create to the benefit of corporations a right to take Canadian water. Thank you. Well, there are questions now?